we're going to be palpating the cervical spine and we're going to be looking for our posterior bony landmarks. So the first thing I'm going to do is start counting down the spinous processes. But before I do that, I want to landmark the back of her occiput on a landmark called the external occipital protuberance. It's usually a bump on the back of a person's head. It's pretty easy to feel. If you just reach and feel the back of your own head, you might feel a very large bump. So the occiput, and then I'm going to slide and put pressure until I feel kind of a softer, squishy space. And that means that I've finished palpating on the occiput or the skull, and now I'm on to the back of the neck. And there's usually a little bit of a gap in here before I feel the first spinous process. That, to me, the soft spot, is actually going to help me determine that this is cervical 1. C1 does not have a spinous process. It's just a ring of bone, so on the back of it, it just has a posterior tubercle. So the first spinous process that we start to feel is actually cervical 2. Some people refer to C1 as your atlas and cervical 2 as the axis. So I'm currently feeling a fairly large spinous process. I have both sides of it in my hand and I can use a back and forth motion to cause a little bit of rotation in her neck. So this is number two. Number one is a soft squishy space above it. I drop below that and roll off of two and I'm feeling number three right away. I like to just slowly make my way to the left and the right. When you're palpating in the cervical spine, you might feel the bifurcation of them. So you might feel two little bumps on the back of it instead of just one. So cervical two, cervical three, a little bit further down, we have number four. And number three and number four are often some of the hardest ones. Because of the lordosis in the back of the neck, they might be quite anterior. Number five starts to climb out of the lordosis. We'll switch hands. Number six, and then finally we have number seven, which is sometimes referred to as the cervical prominence since it sticks out quite a bit and its spinous process is no longer bifurcated. So it's usually one round object. So I have the soft squishy space of C1 right below the occiput here and her cervical seven there. So the whole length of the cervical vertebrae is about this long. Now I am gonna confirm that this is cervical seven versus thoracic one. And the way to do that is to rotate the neck. Because the ribs are holding thoracic one in place, if I'm feeling cervical seven, and I place another finger on T1, if I rotate the neck, I can actually feel the cervical seven moving underneath my finger. It might be hard for you to feel or see in the camera, but essentially what you're feeling is as the person rotates, you're gonna feel that projection move back and forth underneath your finger versus if it's on T1, it's not because the thoracic one is being held in place and is not able to rotate. So I have confirmed that this was cervical seven and this is thoracic one. So those were our spinous processes, but after that, we're gonna look for a couple more landmarks from here. If I'm on the spinous processes and I roll off laterally, I end up going into quite a bit thick muscle tissue. Now the most superficial muscle in this area is trapezius. However, if you ask a person to lift their head up out of the cradle, that's not traps that you will feel. It's actually semi-spinalis capitis, which is the number one kind of neck extend and neck and head extender. So you'll feel it as a really ropey tube where traps is very thin at this point. This is sitting over top of the lamina. I'm gonna go past that ropey muscle. I'm gonna have her lift up her head again. You can easily see that and she's gonna drop it. And as I sink in just past that, I start to feel more bony resistance in here. It's gonna come around to the other side as I'm gonna sink my finger in from the side. So I have fingers on S piece. I have the muscle belly and the lamina. And these fingers are running along what is called the articular processes. It's not easy to count them. They kind of act like shingles, kind of stacked on top of each other, creating an articular pillar. So if you were looking for one individually, I would suggest counting down the spinous process and then moving laterally past the lamina into that location. You do have muscle tissue attached to that as well. A lot of those erectors and neck movers are attached into the articular. Now, if you've already seen where the TVPs are, you can kind of reflect on that. If you have not, I'm gonna point them out here that this is the mastoid process 
and they typically start in front of that. So you can know if I'm on the articulate processes here, if I generically place my fingers here, this is where your transverse processes are. So articular are more posterior on the side of the neck. I'm not the biggest fan of counting your TVPs from prone. I usually like to do that in supine. So stay tuned or we'll click the other video to watch palpation of the TVPs. But from here, you'd have to roll anterior to the mastoid process below the ear and this would be approximately C1. I'd have to push sternocleidomastoid out of the way, which I usually push it anterior to drop into number two, and then start counting my way down. It's gonna get very challenging though to try and find the TVPs pushing through traps, so you're gonna end up having to go in front of it, which is again why I like to do this from supine. It's best to try to do this a couple times and make it as smooth as possible as you count your way down. This is going to be palpation of the cervical spine from the prone position. We're going to be palpating the cervical spine, specifically the transverse processes. So we have our body in supine. I'm going to orient ourselves with its TVP of C1 first of all. So I'm just going to pull the ear forward a little bit and just in behind it is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And the other landmark I like to use is the angle of the mandible. So we follow up the body of it until it turns towards the ramus. So I have two fingers on two different bony landmarks and I'm going to try to go in between the two of them. So it's anterior to the mastoid process and behind the mandible, the ramus of it. I'm going to sink in here and I'm going to, with a decent pressure but not too hard because it's pretty sensitive, I'm going to sink in with my finger pad and I'm going to go gently up and down. And I'm feeling for a small bony projection. This is going to be the transverse process of cervical one. So for other people, the other thing you want to look at is where is their sternocleidomastoid. So I want to be just in front of that sternocleidomastoid as well as the anterior to the mastoid process. Again, go up and down. Just take caution that you're not pushing too hard because of how close it is to nerves and some arteries. So TVP of C1 is here. Now the second one I'm going to look for is going to be underneath sternocleidomastoid. So I've taken my middle finger and I'm lifting up sternocleidomastoid out of the way and I'm going to sink in underneath that. I might need to go a little bit anterior or a little bit posterior as I'm looking for the bony projection sticking out. Now this is not precise. You're not going to be able to feel the actual TVP itself. It's covered in a lot of soft tissue, but I'm feeling a bone dense tissue underneath where I can't really push any further. So I can roll a little bit towards the front of the TVP and I can roll a little bit more towards the back, but you are going to start cross fibering some of the scalenes or levator scapula and some of the other neck muscles. So I'm approximately on two. I'm going to then walk down again. So another finger pad width down and sink in for number three. Walk down again for number four. Number five. Number six. And towards the base of the neck, right in this area here is number seven. So another way to make sure I'm in the right location for number seven is we can landmark that this should be behind the clavicle, anterior to the muscle trapezius, anterior to traps, the upper trapezius here. And then I'm also gonna be using the scalenes and their pulse. So by placing my finger in this location, I'm feeling a strong pulse right here. So in front of that is gonna be the anterior scalene, which is coming off the anterior tubercles of the transverse processes in the cervical spine. And behind this pulse, which is the subclavian artery, I'm on the middle. So the middle is coming off of the posterior tubercles of the TVPs. So right in this area, I'm counting all the way up, palpating along those transverse processes. I'm gonna do this a little bit quicker again, just to repeat myself, just in front of the mastoid process, anterior to SCM, TVP of C1. This is an attachment for levator scapula. So I could ask my partner here just to start raising the shoulder up towards your ear. So that could be a confirmation. I'm not feeling a lot, but that is one of the muscles attaching to it. I'm gonna move SCM out of the way and sink in for number two. 
from two all the way down to seven. This is scalene attachment. So I'm gonna take my opposite hand that's not palpating, place it on the side of her head and ask her to laterally flex into me, good. So I can activate some scalene muscle tissue since those are the primary lateral flexors. So we have two, three, four, five, six, and again at the base of the neck in a similar location, number seven. So we have this roll kind of, of TVPs running down the side of the neck. Now we do have a lordosis, so there might be a slight curvature through the side of the neck. And I do, for safety reasons, only palpate these TVPs in a relaxed position. So primarily in supine, but sometimes in prone. I'm not a fan of palpating this in a seated position. So that's gonna conclude our transverse process palpation from the C-spine.